Hey folks, welcome back to Midwest Long Range. We're back for round two on the Savage Budget Build. Stick with me, I'll tell you everything about it. All right guys, so we're just gonna kinda jump right into what has been done to the Savage since the last time you saw it. Obviously, it has changed a fair bit but the barreled action and trigger is still very factory, no modifications whatsoever. So to begin with on this build, we went to the MDT Oryx chassis, okay? The Oryx chassis is something I've had for a long time. I was planning an older Savage build, and I actually got this in on a trade from a friend of mine. I did not get this from MDT, but... Uh, you know, it's it's a really solid piece of equipment. This is a one-piece aluminum chassis from end to end, and for the money, it's going to be a hard one to beat for stability and rigidity and just having a very good platform to start with. From there, we added the MKM machine grip system here, vertical grip. It has all kinds of different interchangeable parts and what have you that go on it uh, to help you fit this to your hand. I've got piece here that modifies it to where it helps me get onto the trigger correctly. And it's got a little bit of a palm swell inserted over here. There's pieces you can move and change that thing all over the place. From there, we go up the rifle a little ways and uh, I'm running an EGW 30 MOA rail. So Evolution Gunworks sent that over to me. I run their stuff on about everything I can anymore. For the bang for the buck and the quality of the parts you're getting, they're really hard to beat, guys. The crowning jewel of this kind of is the Arkin EP5. This is one of the top budget scopes in precision rimfire or precision rifle. The price point and the features are going to be next to impossible to beat. Now, with that said, we've got some other scopes coming up in later videos that, you know, we'd like to test. This thing is right around the $500 mark. You get five to 25 power, 34 mil tube, 56 mil objective, the turrets are outstanding. Everybody has, by this point, seen Arkins and the EP5 and the SH4s. and So the scope is kind of a known entity in the game today. But who can do a budget build without an Arkin, right? It just has to, they kind of go together. We're going to see if having this extra 25 power versus the 14 power we did on the last setup really helps us be able to see and make changes to what we're doing out there. We're going to do the exact same test that we did last time. We'll use that bench rest target again. We'll use the same norm attack ammo. So we're going to use that as a baseline, right? This is our control factor for those of you out there that are into testing. So that is our control, is the norm attack 22. From we'll there, once we get done with that test and we can compare from last time, then we'll roll this thing up and start doing some legitimate ammo testing and let's oh, figure out whoa, whoa. what this little savage likes. So let's jump on this. We're gonna run out to 50 yards, set up the target. Looks like it's coming around. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and load these mags up and do our 25 shot string. All right, here we go. Little to the right, or to the left, sorry. There we go. Dang it. Whoa. And one doesn't really want to feed there.
last mag. Ten more rounds. See what we can make happen here. Woo! There it is. Oh no. Don't do this to me, Norma. Oh no. Well, there it is. We'll go get it. We'll score it. See where it comes up. I will say just, you know, kind of going off of it here, having the additional power of the Arkin um, really did help me out a lot as far as I didn't get confused to shoot the wrong target like I might have done in the last video if I remember right. And uh, I could really see what happened on my last shots. At 25 power, I'd be like, okay, well, it shot, you know, slightly to the left or to the right, and I can make adjustments based on, you know, seeing what my last, my last impact did. So with that being said, you know, I definitely feel like the optic helped me. Um, I'm not sure if the chassis is any more, you know, it helps me be any more stable or not. Uh, the grip, you know, the, the Boyd's Pro Varmint had a lot of the same features as far as grip angle. And, uh, you know, I do certainly have a better cheek weld this time. But, uh, you know, the barrel is truly free-floated. It is torqued into the chassis. So all of these things are just... Uh, trying to eliminate variance, right, in the whole setup. So it definitely didn't hurt nothing, but I I didn't feel a huge difference there. Um, let's go get a target, see what happens. So there it is, folks, right? We, uh, we went ahead, we shot the exact same target card with the exact same lot of ammo and, uh, you know, just change the scope, change the chassis, um, bipod, basically same. I think we did shoot off a rest in the last video, but just changed mainly the chassis and the optic, right? We went to a higher magnification optic and a more rigid chassis system, and we got the MKM grip. In our previous video, we shot a score on this card of 164 points out of a possible of 250. So, shot it again, and things went quite a bit better really uh we improved our score to a 198 out of 250 um i didn't feel that i changed anything about my shooting style i did shoot off the bipod where in the previous one i i really think i shot off of a uh, off of my little uh called or my little rest over champion rest so uh maybe a little bit of improved stability in the previous video, but the, the optic has made just a, just so much difference as being able to really see and judge my previous shots. Uh, we did come out with a few tens. It looks like I, the way I scored it, I had three, I believe. So that was pretty cool. Everything just felt really good. I'm, I'm anxious to get to do some more stuff. We're going to do some, some ammo testing, really dive down and see if we can find something that this gun really likes. We're going to take it out. We're going to shoot it at distance and see how far we can stretch it. But I just wanted to kind of get the new build back out here for part two of this series and show the new components we decided to go with and just see how much improvement we got from the original stock and a 14 power second focal plane optic to more or less a PRS rig or NRL 22. This would be an outstanding NRL 22 uh, option one rig. I don't know how it does at distance yet, but I can tell you from 100 and in, this thing is, uh, it is more than capable of being a competitive rifle at the matches. So, guys, I appreciate you coming out and hanging out with me today. I know this is kind of a short and sweet type deal, but here we go. Savage, moving on to part three after this. If you guys want to see anything particular... Uh, drop it in the comments any ideas you want to see done with this rifle what kind of ammo should we test i'm going to test the the main ones that i i usually run but uh, let me know what you guys think 
and we'll see you next time right here on Midwest Long Range.